So I was wondering if you could give a definition to a few things. Like we use the word prosperity. What does that mean? Prosperity from our perspective. We may give you a definition from our perspective and from human perspective because in some cases we are not seeing it quite the same way. Prosperity from our point of view is the sum total of what all have launched into the vortex. And the prosperity is a feeling or a state of being when one is in the receptive mode and letting what they've put in come out and manifest in their experience. So you could be prosperous with friends and prosperous with physical well being and prosperous with financial well being. In other words, it's the receiving of what you've asked for, the recognition that it's there, and being in the state of letting it in. When humans think of prosperity, it is much that same way. But often, so many humans use the word prosperity when they're standing outside of it. Most people have a feeling of envy about the subject of prosperity. So instead of actually feeling the well being of prosperity, which is the letting it in in the moment and letting it continue to expand and show itself to you more and more. It's a feeling of being on the outside of it. And so there's the feeling of prosperity where you just want to yodel down the canyon. And there's the feeling of prosperity where you just kind of wish you could get some of it out of their clutches because they've got more than their fair share. I love it. So it's perspective. It's like you're, you're feeling or what you're looking at. You could or... say everything. That's those two clumps we were talking about. There's the being tuned in, tapped in, turned on. There's under the influence of source perspective, and then there's under the influence of something else. You're going to receive some time on this cruise, something that Esther has had printed for you. Let the cat out of the bag. You can look forward to it. <laughs> she thought about making it a bumper sticker, but she didn't think you should drive around with a bumper sticker on your car that says under the influence. <laughs> So what it is, it's a dash card that you can put on the dash of your car and it reflects up into your windshield or in front of a mirror. You can't read it when you look at it. It makes no sense. But when it reflects back, you can read it because you are always, if you are awake, you're offering vibration. And if you are offering vibration, law of attraction is responding and giving you vibrational harmony with something. So you are always under the influence of something. And so when you care about being satisfied, then you care about what you're under the influence of. And so these definitions that you're asking for could be what's the definition when I'm under the influence and what's the definition when I'm not under the influence. Yep. Okay. So I have a, a funny story. So, uh, we're a group of eight traveling this time. I have five kids, my husband and I, and a babysitter. And so we're flying from Miami to Barcelona and we all get there and I'm like checking in to go to Barcelona and they're like, that flight was this morning. I like, <laughs> we had like the day and time wrong. So it was so funny to me because leading up to this, my husband had some resistance of perspective. So we get to the hotel and so we have to buy same day tickets for eight people to Barcelona. So we, we find it, it lines up perfectly. We're on this new airline. We're like, ooh, this is kind of weird. Like it wasn't $2,000 a person. It's the same day. We're all in the same row. Okay, here we go. So we get to the airport and we get on the airplane and I start looking around and everybody is like staring at me that I'm crazy because I'm like, oh my gosh, the plane is beautiful. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's like clean and there's space and the seats and anyways, it worked out great. We got here and the story makes me smile because I'm like, oh my gosh, we're so prosperous. We bought 16 tickets to Barcelona. <laughs> And of course, there's the other side where you could be looking at it like, we had to buy 16 tickets to Barcelona. So we're prosperous. Apparently. <laughs> but let's chew on this just a little bit because that's a lot to hold your vibration in place about, isn't it? It was so fun. 
Oh, fun watching it. And we didn't get our money back from the first eight. And we also had priority. We were premium, like first class, five out of the eight, which we all lost. And I am excited that we could spend so much on flights. Because if we could spend that on flights, then we could spend that on the other desires and the other desires and the other desires. Like, it's there. We have a question for you. There's no right or wrong answer. Okay. And it'll be helpful in the context of what we've been talking about here. So, does it seem to you... Now, we know after the fact that you've had an opportunity to work this over in your mind. But does it seem to you at the moment that you were at ease immediately and having fun with it immediately yes well then that's what we're talking about about you're so accustomed to being in that satisfied mode that there was nothing for you to overcome like that the driver of the car driving us back to the hotel was like that's what step five is step one is you know what you don't want so you know what you do want step two is source is answering step three is you get into the receiving mode step four is you've practiced it so well that you're a master at the receiving mode mm -hmm. seems funny that step four would just be really good at step three but that's the way we like to call it mm -hmm. step four is just being really consistent at it and step five is being back in what many would see as a step one moment and not losing your sense of satisfaction and when you're moving through life living like that then things do unfold for you comfortably because sometimes when something starts to go wrong for someone you're feeling satisfied conditionally satisfied mm -hmm. as long as everything's going all right but when something goes wrong then you take the hit of it and then as you take the hit of that now you're queued up for more to go wrong and 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 more to go wrong but if you're able to maintain your sense of satisfaction even though something got a little wonky then your recovery time is instantaneous and so okay so um, I have one other question so I'm really good at navigating my group and navigating my group with lots of people around so I sense it's almost like an archetype but I'd like some clarity about this like we arrive and we're gonna be getting on the ship here's an example and I feel this leadership almost like a queen come and my energy field gets like huge and we don't wait in line, we, we move, right? It's like, oh, you could take this, right? We all get through in 10 minutes. There were like lots of people waiting in line and we're through. However, so I move through, I'm satisfied, I'm looking around at my people and sometimes, maybe the answer is to not pay attention to them, but sometimes this energy that I have is I feel is like misinterpreted by them as like almost always <laughs> okay that's just it I just need to like put my sunglasses on move move like a queen and not care because that looking for mutuality with something else makes you under the influence of them that's what we're talking about are you under the influence of source energy because that's what that feels like it feels like clarity it feels like when to move Esther talks about how she really enjoys moving around the planet by herself because when she has an impulse and follows it then the timing is really really nice but if she has to round up uncooperative humans who balk or hesitate or move differently now what we would like her to understand your feeling of empowerment you've even assigned yourself a title that they better obey is helpful in the sense that you just don't want to get caught up in whatever's going on with them which requires a lot of focus because most of you are accustomed to 
Ah, offering most of your vibration in response to what you're observing and so the more that is happening around you the more likely it is that you would observe something that is of a vibrational nature that would introduce resistance into your equation so that you're not tuned in tapped in turned on and then you are as confused as the group that you are roaming the planet with yeah so I'm not confused we're moving through but there's that like little I, just, I like it to be smooth so there's a little bit when you think about it these people who you care about you love them you've put what you care about them into your vortex too so in a way actually in a pretty substantial way those whom you love are in your vortex but you still cannot create in their reality this is the fun of interacting with so many others it's the finding your way it's the maintaining your vibration anyway being tuned in tapped in turned on so that you know what to do you know what's next even if there are those who are confused around you and most of all under those conditions if you're tuned in you have less of a knee-jerk response less of a bumpy ride but in the moment that you begin or continue to care about their response to you now it's not pure anymore now you're trying to see yourself through their eyes instead of seeing them through the eyes of source here's the big part source sees them as perfect no matter how dysfunctional they are but when you see their dysfunction you separate from source and blame them so you think your deviation from source is about their dysfunction it isn't it's about your lack of focus conditionally you could say if you guys would shape up I would feel better and that would be true but it's still conditional and then you have no power because they're fickle they're gonna behave the way they're gonna behave you don't want to be under the control of how somebody else is behaving because you can get really good at focusing just where you want to focus but sometimes you can find yourself living a sort of isolated life because when they misbehave if you feel bad then you have to take more control about their behavior and the more control you try to take the less good they feel so the more control you try to take and then the less good you feel it's so lovely for others when you are under the influence and letting universal forces inspire them you want to inspire their behavior not motivate it oh and you can't inspire their harmony with you unless you're in harmony with your source and when you're in harmony with your source then you might inspire their harmony with their source but you're never wanting them to obey you you're always wanting them to find harmony with their source and you really don't want them to move around with you in a pack either you don't want to train them into the belief that you are their leader right only when we're going through security <laughs> then they no. can spread out <sighs> only before they are 12 and only when they have their first date and only when they go out on their first driving and only when and only when and only then don't give yourself an exception to that you're either trusting their alignment with their source or you are not and when you are not trusting their alignment with their source and you are wanting to be the source for all of them then you begin to feel the burden of that responsibility because you're not connected and then you begin to resent they're not complying with it and off you go you say oh my gosh it's so good like all I wanted them to do is admire me <laughs> walking through all of these people with ease yeah it, this was so satisfying thank you so much so good thank you